Trafalgar Square, which is always a nerve-wracking place to be if you're centre righty. We pan down there. There's some mess waiting for us. It's not too clear at the minute. The Extinction Rebellion seem to have a forklift, a reach forklift there. So I'm not sure how nature like that is. We'll go find out. Let's have a look. Listen, the people on the centre right are conservatives. The weather doesn't stop these people. These tents. Wow. permit for this noise. That person's got an EU hat on. Now, I'm not expecting the most riveting conversations when it comes to uh, intellect, but I am expecting interesting conversations nonetheless. It's nice to see the National Art Gallery hasn't been decimated. It's quite early, isn't it? Sometimes I really do envy Nelson. He gets to sit up there, avoiding all of this crap down here. All right, I suppose we better start talking to people, haven't we? Burning up. Trickling down. I don't see the scientists among this rabble. I must miss. I must have missed them. I don't see any scientists here. Just put your phone up against them so we can hear what they're doing. Just Um, what? Well, the, 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 the tent, the, the everything. Yeah. Well, what you're doing right here looks interesting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. There you go. I'm from the reality report. My name's Vinny Sullivan. Innie. Innie. Sorry? Innie. Innie. I thought you said Vinny. I thought Vinny, 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 Vinny. So what's this all about? Um, what's, what's, what's the film? What's reality the film? report. We're covering the, what goes on in the city, other people's opinions, their reality, okay. and how they find yeah. things. But so, I saw um, one here in sort of like a prayer uh, circle. Uh, well, we're we at the yeah. system, so just kind of trying to figure out what, how people are feeling about the site. So you're planning whether people need to go home now? Um, no, not not specifically. Yeah. Um, I, I can't really. I can't really talk about a meeting that's going on currently so I should be able to say what any conclusions were. Like. But yeah, people just talk throughout the trunk. Have you, you know, been stay, here long? Stay connected, stay communicated. Um I have been here every every now and again. Just hopping right, in and out, yeah. Okay. Well thank you very much for your time. I'm gonna go talk that's to somebody. Right. Does anyone you suggest that I speak to that's gonna give me a a good idea of what's going on here today. Is there anywhere you can send me? Um, um not right now. This is very, not right now. Much happening. Yeah. Was it? Um, yeah. So. Would you like to tell me a little summarised version of what's going on here today and why you're here? Yeah, sure. Um, why we're here? We're we're here, um, continuing the great British tradition of civil disobedience. Civil disobedience. Yes, that's right. Because we have an urgent message for the government. And we have a right, of course, to exercise that right. Peaceful, non-violent protest. Mm -hmm. um, and the urgent message for the government is that 
they need to do a, uh, an about turn, uh, a handbrake turn, on their policies with regards to the environment and chewing up the planet. I see. Okay. Do you have a policy on something like immigration, which obviously the more people that come, the more resources we, we use? Is that something that you're... I think in an emergency, uh, people pull together. There are people around the world who are now dying. Um, the United Nations puts it at about 250,000 a year deaths directly from climate change. They certainly have some interesting statistics, the yes. United Nations, don't they? Yes, I mean, they should do because they have, you know, uh, many, many scientists from all over the world working together mm. to um, form consensus. Certainly opinion. do. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I do need to get back to the meeting. Okay. Well, okay. Well, but before you go, could you yes. conclude that the more people that are in one place, the more fumes and emissions we put out? Not necessarily, no. If, if they're using... Uh, I mean, what we need to do, again, in an emergency situation, we need to look at basic human needs. When you cover basic human needs, then look at what we can afford to do on top of that. Uh, you can cover basic human needs quite simply without a lot of um, destruction of the environment. You can have a cyclical economy. Okay, well, thank you very much, sir. Okay, thank and good you. Luck with your well, good. Okay, thank you. Cheers. Okay, so before we go any further, keep your eyes out for this character, who you will see instantly recognise me just as I do him. You'll notice me check behind me because it's quite clear to me who they are. This is the Socialist Workers' Party, Antifa, basically. Make no mistake, when you're dealing with Stand Up To Racism or Socialist Workers' Party, you're dealing with anti-fascist intel or Antifa directly. So before we continue, I will play a short clip from a video of mine from a while back, so there can be no mistaking as to who you're about to see. The reason this is relevant is because these are the far, far lefties. These are the far left agitants and activists that you see in the streets of London and around the country. This is ever so more relevant when we're dealing with people that claim to be purely about nature and the environment and claim to have no political leaning whatsoever. Feel free to pause when we pan our camera down towards the stall where you will see the usual suspects, Karl Marx books, works of far left literature, you know, fascism written across the covers, the usual far left anti-free type of jargon that you see when there is a feminist march in full swing or a socialist workers party event or some sort of race related event. It's certainly not something I'd expect to see. It's something to do with the environment or anywhere near something that would claim to be apolitical, which in itself is impossible with some of the things in which they're asking for. The reason I check behind me in the way I do and keep an eye out is because these people are known to be violent and I know will recognise me immediately. Lo and behold, shortly as I'm giving an interview, I am surrounded by them, which you cannot immediately see on camera. You will see one woman come round and take a photo of me. She had been doing this many times and seemed dissatisfied that I wasn't paying her attention. So she got one last one right round in front of me. You'll see her pop up. Which is why as I'm talking to the gent, you'll notice I keep having to look to my right due to the amassing crowd behind me which were taking photos of myself seeking acknowledgement so very desperately. After the interview, you will hear a clip of the police paying me attention and saying my name and then making an attempt to come and talk to me. Which now seems to happen every time I try to perform any practice of journalism in the city of London. Then, as opposed to me being able to get any more questions or footage, it's instead a game of Assassin's Creed, and I have to vacate. So the short clip in bound is of the past, so you can clearly see the type of people we're dealing with who are at Extinction Rebellion, people that claim to be non-violent and apolitical. Let's go on. We're not interested. Okay. We know what Nazis are all about. What are Nazis all about? Go, go, go. What about us? Looks like Nazis. We know that you're Nazis. Oh, sorry, sorry. Am I a member of the Nazi party?
I just show a couple of uh, people I recognise. Hello everyone. Can I ask you what's going on here? We're just covering the day. What's this all about? Oh, we're just washing up. Washing up? Yeah. And this is the designated washing up station, is it? Yeah. Uh, you, do you stay here and do it or do people come and do their own everyone, stuff? Everyone rotates, so you'll do like half an hour, an hour. Is this for the campers? Yeah. Oh, right. We've had food and we've got the dishes. And then we get back to the dishes. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, okay. Uh, what about facilities to wash yourself? Is there anything like that or is that a bit? Yeah, yeah there's spots, designated spots where you can go through to like table spots and set up. Okay. Alright, safe spots, yeah? Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you anyway. Thank you. So this is about helping people understand, um, I guess, uh, I guess part of the purpose of Extinction Rebellion, which is some of our core demands, for example, tell the truth, really yeah. important one, um, to be able to, uh, I guess, talk about the way in which we act. So we talked about non-violent direct action. One of the things that's really important is that this is a peaceful movement. There is no violence. Violence is absolutely not encouraged. And you'll see all the things that have happened across London and throughout the world. Nobody has, well, there's, there's been no violence. Um, Did you say that there's any type of political leaning? Uh, is there any sort of political leaning? I'd say no. I mean, politics, I guess, uh, the climate emergency doesn't respect our current political system. So our current political system is set in light, right and left, but the thing about the climate emergency is that it affects everybody equally, or some people more than others, but it doesn't matter whether you are uh, particularly conservative or particularly liberal, the implications and impact of what's happening to the planet will be felt by every human on Earth. So Could it be said that maybe it's, it's been sprung quite quickly from zero to 100? Could it maybe have been drip fed a little bit slower than, say, gridlocking things? It's a, yeah, it's a really good question, right? So actually, Extinction Rebellion started officially about a year ago. It was set up by a small group of people um, who uh, stu 
studied how to, um, I guess, enact social change. Um, and they started a year ago. So similar to Greta Thornberg, who um, started a year ago outside of school in uh, uh, Sweden. Uh, in Sweden, um, that became a mass movement of seven and a half million people a couple of months about a month ago that demonstrated. So Extinction Rebellion has gone from naught to a hundred. A hundred being this time here with international demonstrations happening all over the world um, in the space of a year. And I guess the question is, is that quick enough? So again, given the enormity of the climate emergency, given the implications of the um, polar ice caps are melting, are melting four times faster than expected in 2001, as an example, given the fact that the UK government is still investing in the world's most carbon-intensive European, um, Europe's most carbon-intensive project in the third run row, Heath and Heath Road, um, given that they're building the world's biggest car park, given that they're investing in fracking, I guess the question isn't, um, is it going too quickly? I think the question would be, is, is, it, is it going to be quick enough? And before I waste too much more of your time, hey, this has been great. Yeah, I have to ask something very important. Yeah. Now, would you summarise that the more people in one place, the more difficult it is to keep the emissions down? Uh, that's a good question. Good question. So, do you mean in terms of um, how do you understand human beings? Human beings, hairsprays, uh, aerosols. The more people in one place, the harder it is to control such a, a system. So, it's a good point. Yeah. So, I guess more people equals more output, right? So, output might be waste, it might be productiveness, but it will equal more output the more people that you have. I guess in terms of us trying to reduce the amount of impact that we have on the environment, there is obviously a little bit, there is an amount of um, responsibility that sits on us as individuals to be educated, to understand what's happening and to make our own decisions. But I think fundamentally, um, we need the government to help us transition to a fairer way in this world exists to be able to um, reduce our impact on the environment as a, as, 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 as a society. So yes, in the current system, you might find that more people create more waste and create more environmental impact, but I guess the point is that we need to transition to a place where actually we don't end up impacting so hugely on the environment. And then if you do have people consolidated in one place, then I think it will probably be less of a... So you, you don't think a lot of people in one place is a problem? Uh, for me personally, I don't really have an opinion. Um, I think that it, you know, any city, any big urban environment comes with the implications of the current society that means more fumes, more concrete, more um, litter, more waste. So again, until we change our society to one that actually puts human beings and equality and uh, the environment at the centre of the way that we live, then I think right now, yes, it's a problem. In the future, I'd like to hope that actually we can live in whatever society that we build that is fair, just and environmental. So right now, until we get this all fixed, we should stop immigration. Uh, no, I don't think I said that. <laughs> I don't think I said that. I certainly don't agree with that. I personally don't agree with borders. I think it doesn't matter whether you were born on this side of a border or another. And I... Hey, man. Thanks, mate. Yeah, you're really good, yeah. But that was a, that's a fair question. Did you notice, everyone? to us, I think they're following us around now, so maybe a sharp exit is needed. Not the 
Best of Weathers. No, the other one. I'm looking for you. For the old bill? Yeah. All right. Told by one of our little spotters, the police are looking for me. Well, I won't put that bit in actually. I've just been told by one of our spotters that I've come over specific radios with my name. So I've had to um, divert, as it were. That's very suspicious, that. That is very suspicious. Yeah. We've had that photo taken about seven, eight times. Oh, mate, you see so, them coming straight up to my face yeah, to make a point. Straight up. Yeah, so. and I know who they were. I recognised um, a couple of them at the corner of my eye. It was Stand Up To Racism, okay. which are Antifa. I think we even passed one of their stalls leaving. So we'll see, you, you'll see who they are. Yeah. Right, now. That didn't take long. No, it didn't, right. That was a bit quick. Yeah. Very quick. I told you. Yeah, that was shockingly fast. So, I mean, we were there to ask about, you know, nature protesters, climate change protest questions, as it were. And for some reason, um, they still don't want me there. I don't know why it's not going to be politically involved. I don't understand, you know, and even if it was, why am I not permitted to stand about and ask questions? It's a sad state of affairs, it really is. It really is. But it's an education, it's education for everyone in denial. Anyone who says that we're just running a mouse, it's all conspiracy. These people have got washing facilities, they're allowed to wash their cups and what have you. I can't imagine that being made possible for Brexiteer protesters and people like that. In fact, I imagine they're usually treated with an iron fist. Think for yourself. Uh -huh. 